The market is hovering around all time highs. And after the market closed today, I decided to open up a very small one DTE short position. This is the spy on the 15 minute time frame. I noticed this bear flag, but that's not the only reason why I decided to open up the short position. I just wanted to share some thoughts that I have and the reason behind why I opened my trade. So starting with the obvious, one thing I noticed as the markets closed today was this bear flag. It was forming all day, but I waited until after the market closed because sometimes the last 15 minutes of the day, we see some random price action and it can completely throw off a trade. Index options or options on the ETF like the SPY, QQQ, and IWM, you can actually trade these options 15 minutes after the market closes if you're using a platform like Thinkorswim. On the NASDAQ, there was also a similar pattern that was forming and that caught my attention. On the volume profile for the ES, I noticed that we actually broke down below the value area low today and we actually spent a decent amount of time there. On top of that, the market was consolidating below last week's point of control. So this volume profile is showing the profile for the entire week. So this is last week. This is the week before, and this is the current week's profile. The point of control is all the way up here. Now this can be a, some sort of supply zone that's forming up here. There's no way to know until price returns back up to this level and if it gets rejected, then we'll have some sort of confirmation that this is indeed some sort of supply zone that has been forming up here. But today, it was interesting to me that the market was spending a decent amount of time below this zone. That was showing that buyers were not really looking to be that aggressive as price was actually struggling to bounce. That's not the type of price action that we tend to see whenever buyers are aggressive or whenever we can expect a strong bounce in the market. My trade was only open a few hours ago, so anything can happen tomorrow. The actual position is a beer put spread on the SPY. I'm long the 669 puts and I'm short the 665 puts. This is a vertical spread. It's a very simple spread. It didn't cost that much to open. It's a 1DTE. Whenever trading directional 1DTE trades, as far as I'm concerned, you have to be willing to risk almost your entire position because if the market gapped up 1% tomorrow, this trade will be essentially dead and I'm going to lose anywhere from 70 to 90% by the time the market opens. So you have to use a position size that you are very comfortable with. In my case, I'm only in two lots, so it's nothing that crazy if the trade does not work out. It'll be a small loss or it can be a really nice gain. But as far as I'm concerned, I can be down 100% tomorrow. Something else that caught my attention here today was the fact that the ADD was weak all day. So this is also confirming the price action that we were seeing on the charts. I was spotting no divergence between the ADD and price action, so I was not eager to buy the dip. Anyone that knows me knows that I am generally not looking to be short the market. And if I am short the market, it's generally going to be a small position or it has to be backed by some larger macro thesis. In this case here, I'm just looking for a really nice win relative to how much I'm risking. Asking. There was no real divergence in the VIX today. So as we can see, the VIX actually elevated and it held its gains all day, consolidating around the highs. This week actually started with an elevated VIX. So that was something that I took notice at the start of yesterday. The market has gone lower and the VIX is also staying elevated. Something else that I also clocked was we were hovering around a key gamma strike here today. So 668 is a key net negative gamma strike. So take notice of how the beer flag formed. I remembered a couple weeks ago, we had a similar situation where this bear flag formed right at the highest net negative gamma strike. And overnight, there was a gap down with a little bit of continuation in the morning. I'm not expecting the exact same thing to happen. However, if that did happen, that would be great. If we gap down below 667, then I would have high conviction that the market is going to 665 tomorrow. But at the same time, I generally like to wait for the support level to break break before I get short, unless I'm shorting on the backside weakness earlier in the day, but that's not the case here today as I open up the swing position after the market's closed. If the market went down to 665, that would be about a 0.6% drop in price action. A 0.6% drop would put me right around here. Now with two lots, we get down here, let's just say we closed around here, that's around $600 return. Now, I'm not looking to hold this until the end of the day tomorrow, but let's just say it's around middle of the day or so, and we're around here, 0.6%. It's around a $500 return and considering that it's an only a one DTE and the amount of risk that I'm taking, I would consider that a really nice win. Something else to take note of is the fact that the SPX actually broke out of its short term trend or its short term channel. So if we just draw out the channel right here, 
we can see that today was the first real breakdown of this channel. And as we broke down, we formed this bear flag. Now for a larger short trade, I would generally wait for price to try to get back into the channel and if it fails that's where i would look to enter in a short trade with a little bit more risk and probably going something like a 14 dte trade as i would expect a larger drop the opportunity would be much better the risk would be lower and so forth but for a smaller trade like this one, I don't want to end up missing out on the markets gapping down or potentially selling off early as the bell rings. I do trade futures options and that's a benefit. So if tomorrow morning pre-market, I see some extra confluence or there's something else that I like, I can always add to the short position. I can either short the ES or I can actually buy ES puts. The current short position in which I'm in can be considered a feeler or a starter position that can be something that turns into a bigger swing trade. I would love to see the ES actually try to make it back up to this point of control and fail here. That's again where I would look to enter in a more aggressive short position, especially if we see some sort of confluence with the SPX trying to come back up to the channel and failing. The way price behaves at certain levels on your chart can be an indication for what's likely to come also. The way we broke down below this key area here today and just sat down below it, Yes, it could be consolidating within a potential demand zone here. This was a previous all-time high right here. As we can see, the markets put in an all-time high, sold off. Then it came back, broke out, retested it, went higher. It has yet to come back down to this level. So it is actually consolidating above a level. So for all we know, this can be a higher high that's forming and maybe the market will consolidate and actually push higher. No one knows. Again, I'm just sharing some of my thoughts. These are all the things that an experienced trader is going to take a look at before opening a position. Within a minute, a trader can identify the technical pattern. Here's our bear flag. Within a few seconds, we can identify the consolidation below support. We can spot confluence with the NASDAQ. We can see some sort of confluence with the market internal like the ADD. We can see confluence with implied volatility using the VIX as a proxy. We can see that there's no divergence on an indicator like the RSI on the ES futures. We can see the consolidation below the volume profiles value area low or below the previous week's point of control. I'm sharing my screen from one of my monitors, but within a few seconds, my eyes just look around these things and go boom, 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 boom. Then it just becomes a matter of how much risk would I like to allocate towards a trade like this? Is it worth putting on a thousand dollars risk overnight? Is it worth five hundred dollars? Is it worth just a hundred dollars in risk? Instead of just buying a put, that's something that would be great. I didn't really want to do that because the theta decay on a 1DTE can be brutal. So in other words, if I bought just this uh, put here and we see, let's just say tomorrow open theoretically around here, if the market just stayed where it was, again, this is theoretically, this position can be down almost 50%. And that's disgusting to me. That's like, you know, the, tra the trade didn't even really have its chance to breathe yet. Or if the market just goes up slightly, this trade can be down a lot. Now, again, this is theoretically, let's just say implied volatility was increased a little bit. It won't be down as much. But for the most part, I'm operating or I'm basing my risk off of an undeal scenario. And that's too aggressive to me. It doesn't matter if I'm trading with $100, $50, $5,000, $10,000. It doesn't matter. The risk to me is too high. 50% risk is way too high. Again, it does not matter if I'm just using a hundred bucks, 200 bucks. That's not the type of habit you want to create for yourself as a trader. Now, in this case here, look at what we're doing with the risk. I just resetted the implied volatility or the theoretical implied volatility and take a look at this. If the market goes nowhere overnight, it'll only be down about 25%. Let's just say implied volatility does increase a little bit, which it often does by the time the market opens tomorrow. There's usually going to be a little influx of implied volatility. Now, this is something I can manage to be down 50 percent. The market would have to actually go up about a dollar, 10 points on the SPX or so. And this is just giving this trade a little bit more breathing room. So if we go to the chart here, that means from here to here, it's just a little bit of breathing room. And sometimes that's all it takes to help your psyche. So about up here, back over 670, that feels a lot more comfortable 
to me as a risk manager to be able to open up a position now because my stop loss is above 670. At this point, I don't really want to be in the trade. It would be brutal to buy a 1DTE put and the market opens up right here and then that position's down 50% and then I stop out of the trade and then 30 minutes later, the market just rolls over and then it ends up dropping. But opening up the spread just means I still have the same asymmetrical potential for returns, meaning if the market did go down to here, I can still make a large gain relative to what I'm risking, but I'm giving the trade more of an opportunity to actually be successful. So the first 30 minutes of the day, it's less anxiety, there's less concern or less worry, and it's less of a haste to stop out of a trade prematurely. It actually means if the market was to go above 670, I'll be willing to wait to see how that 15 minute candle closes and then see how the next 15 minute candle opens and potentially how the next 15 minute candle will actually close because it's not uncommon to see the first 15 minute candle just jump up like this and the next 15 minute candle just drops right back down. That's 30 minutes right there where anything can happen, but I'm giving myself the ability to actually breathe or wait to see what will happen. Lastly, we could just take a look at some gamma exposure for tomorrow. We know 6,700 is a very dominant strike on the SPX. This is the gamma exposure profile for tomorrow. So for the October 8th expiration, today's October 7th. This is where the SPX close. As I mentioned earlier in this video, I would generally wait for support to break, which is at 6,700 level, and then look to potentially get short. As the closer you can short to the break of a support level, the lower your risk is going to be for a short. So if you short right here, it means your stop loss can be right above that level, and then you can be willing to take profit at a much further strike. So you can risk 10 points to potentially make 30, 40, 50 points, or shorting at the failure of resistance. We have this strike right here, 67, 67.25. By the time to, by the time the market opens tomorrow, this entire gamma exposure profile will look completely different. But I do like to look at the one DTE gamma exposure profile sometimes just to get some sort of an idea. It's just extra bit of data or information on the upcoming day, especially if I'm looking to put on a one DTE swing trade. My expectation of what I would be looking for this would be for the markets to not be above this level. This would be about close to 60.70 on the SPY. So that same level in which we were looking at, I would expect this to potentially potentially be some sort of resistance here. If the market can hold above this level, then there's no reason for me to be in that short position anymore as we're more than likely heading up to this strike here. Now, if the market gaps down below 6,700, that would be amazing as it means I won't really have to wait for anything as the market is in between these two strikes, it can ping pong between these two. So there isn't much of a reason to be aggressive with conviction in any direction. The break below this is going to give conviction to shorts to potentially target this level. 650 on the SPX is down here. So let's just mark that up. So, so from here to here is 650. So it's almost 1%. So 0.8% to about 1% is what I'm looking for. If, as we head back to the SPY and we, and we just pull that up again, just so you guys can see. So from here to here, that's well, remember I'm targeting pretty much here, but if we got that low 0.8% to 1%, that puts the SPY all the way down here. And at that point, my trade is obviously in max profit and that's where I would be willing to hold it because then my plan would be if the market got down here, I'd be willing to stay in the trade until the markets broke back up above here. If it broke back above, above here, I would just stop out of the trade and lock in whatever profits there are at that point. But the point of all this is there's already a plan for how to execute or what I'm going to do tomorrow at least regarding this position. So this is it here on Thigaswim. For some of you guys that this might be a little bit cleaner just to see what the slice is. The risk on this trade is if the markets went up to, we said about 670, so let me just drag this down here. So right above this is pretty much what the stop loss would be, right above here. And obviously if the market was down 1%, we're looking at a very nice win. Let me just jump this over, it's right on uh, tomorrow's date. Market stays flat, implied volatility increases. We're looking at you know no real harm or foul holding overnight. I don't necessarily need the market to be down 0.1% as I'm just looking for it to be down anywhere from like 0.6% would be the area in which I'd be looking for.
max profit target would be about 625 or it says right here $636. Again, that's at expiration. The only way I would hold this until expiration is if the market gapped all the way down to here and then it bounced back up to here and it failed here and or just consolidated around here for a bit. By that time tomorrow, the trade will be up over $500. I'll just close out the trade as anything can happen in the last few minutes of the day. It'll be pointless to hold it and give back all those potential returns. As simple as the trade is in which I'm talking about in this video, you guys know that I generally have a plan for the week and there are other positions in which I have opened for the week also. So this is not the main bread and butter. It's just a cool trade that I figured I would just come on and share with you guys as it's simple enough. At the end of the day, it started with just identifying the bear flag at this uh, interesting level on the charts, similar to what happened a couple weeks ago. This is the trade here. But I do have, you know, an iron condor that's also running that's been doing well. Can just leg out of the trade. It actually within 24 hours decayed over 32%, which is great. It's currently decayed over 40%. And then I have this unconventional calendar spread that I also decided to open. I couldn't resist some of this data decay around 6,700 earlier today. Also zero DTE iron fly as well as zero DTE iron condor around the 6,700 strike today did really well. When you trade complex option strategies, you tend to layer positions onto each other as you're generally managing an entire portfolio, putting, never putting too much risk on any one individual trade, especially if you're a non-directional trader or a trader that really enjoys data decay. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. We'll stay tuned. We'll see how tomorrow ends up working out. I don't know if I'll do a video tomorrow on how the trade works itself out. You guys can follow along. Check it and see what happens for yourself. Hopefully you learned something. Subscribe to the YouTube channel if you did. Leave a comment, like the video. Thanks for watching.